Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to talk about how to write Java applications using Oracle Berkeley DB. We will start with theories, talking about what Berkeley DB is good for, why Java and Berkeley DB works well together, and what Java APIs you can use in your application. To get you a concrete feeling about how everything works in a real-world application, we will present you a sample program. Let's get started and see why Berkeley DB is interesting. Oracle Berkeley DB is a high-performance key-value database. It is designed for high-throughput applications requiring in-process, bulletproof management of mission-critical data. It scales gracefully from managing a few bytes to terabytes of data. It supports full asset transactions. You can run concurrent transaction operations with different isolation levels. Berkeley DB also supports transaction recovery. That is, committed transactions are durable even after crashes, and uncommitted transactions are aborted after recovery. Berkeley DB supports both primary and secondary indexes. It also offers cursors to help you iterate through potentially big collections of data. Berkeley DB supports many platforms. It runs on Windows, Linux, Unix, Android, iOS, Windows Mobile, and many other platforms. So why Java and Berkeley DB fit together? Both Java and Berkeley DB has excellent cross-platform support, so you can continue to enjoy the right ones run everywhere model most Java applications enjoy. Both Java and Berkeley DB covers a big range of devices. They both work on tiny embedded devices, and they both work on clustered enterprise applications, so you can deploy both Java and Berkeley DB on a wide range of devices. So how to write Java applications using Berkeley DB? Well, Berkeley DB provides three APIs you can use in your Java application. You can use the base key value API, the direct persistent layer API, or the standard JDBC API. The base key value API is a lower level API. It offers you full control over how your data is persisted in your database. It resembles closely to the C API. It works with Java 4 and plus, but the downside is it's more verbose. The fundamental objects to deal with key value API are handles. There are environment handles, database handles, and cursor handles. An environment handle encapsulates multiple databases. It is where resources shared across databases are managed. For example, you manage logs, transactions, shared buffer pools in the environment. So it's comparable to the database instance concept in Oracle Database. A database manages a collection of key value pairs, and you can choose per each database the access method it uses. So a database in Berkeley DB is comparable to a table in Oracle Database. Cursors are used to access key value pairs in a database. It provides an iterative paradigm to access the data. This is what it looks like to use a key value API. To open the environment and the database, you first construct environment config and database config objects, setting up various configurations, and create a new environment handle and open the database handle using the configuration objects. To use transactional database, you need to call setTransactional true on both environment config and database config objects. To write and get values, you use database entries with tuple bindings. First, create database entries for the key and the value, and use tuple bindings to convert their values to database entries. Finally, use put to write the key value pair in the database. To get the value back, use get with the corresponding key database entry. The value database entry will be populated with values returned from the database for the given key and you can use a binding to convert the database entry back to your original value. To use cursors, first open the curse handle with open cursor, and then use get search key to move the cursor to the key value pair you want to retrieve. If the search returns operation status success, it means the key value pair is found, and you can use a tuple binding 
to extract the value from the database entry. Direct Persistent Layer API is another API provided by the Berkeley DB Java interface. Compared to the Key Value API, this API offers a higher level abstraction. It works with objects instead of key value pairs. It uses annotations so you can write less code. Because the conversion between objects and their persistent data is automated by the API, changing the class definition of persistent objects may cause the API to fail to load existing values in the database because the API may not be able to match the saved data to the change schema. So generally speaking, the DPL API works better with relatively static schema. The core classes of the DPL API are the Entity Store, Primary Index, Secondary Index, and Entity Cursor. Opening an environment is same in DPL API as in Key Value API. However, instead of opening a database handle, you open the Entity Store. You create a new store config, setting up configurations, and create a new Entity Store using environment and store config. To save objects, you need to annotate the class of the objects with the entity annotation. And for each entity class, it requires a primary key field. You annotate the field with the primary key annotation. In addition, every entity class requires a nullary constructor. You can make the nullary constructor private but you need to provide one so that the DPL API can construct objects. With the DPL API, you access objects with primary index. You get a primary index from the entity store and use put or get to save and get objects from the database. Using cursors is also easier with the DPL API. You use entities on the index to get a cursor object and you can just iterate through the cursor with a for loop. For those of you who prefer the traditional SQL interface, BerkeleyDB also provides the JDBC API. BerkeleyDB uses SQLite dialect and it supports JDBC4. The URL for accessing a BerkeleyDB database is jdbc colon SQLite colon slash and the database file name. To help you grasp the concepts, we have created a sample program. The sample program simulates a parking lot with one parking meter. It has both a OLTP and OLAP part. The OLTP part models typical ticket transactions. The OLAP part models business intelligence and data mining scenarios. In the sample program, we collect statistics from operational logs. The sample program runs on multiple platforms. We have tested it on Linux, Unix, and Windows. We have also provided project files for IntelliJ, Eclipse, and JDeveloper IDEs. The sample program implements the same application using all three APIs, and it covers many BerkeleyDB features, like transactions, cursors, primary and secondary index. This is the data model of the sample program. We use two kinds of data. Tickets are used in ticket transactions. Each ticket has a unique ID, the ID of the parking meter issuing the ticket, and when the ticket is created. The ticket log models operational logs generated by parking meters. Each log contains the time the log is created, the parking meter ID, the ticket ID, the action performed, and additional business data. As in the typical application, the ticket ID is generated from a sequence. Also, the statistics we are going to collect in the application are per parking meter statistics. So we have created a secondary index on the meter ID field of the ticket log. The data access layer of the sample program consists of three interfaces, DB Manager, which manages the environment or a JDBC connection. It also manages transactions and creates DAO objects. 
we have two types of DL objects, TikiDL for writing CRUD operations on tickets, and TikiLockDL for writing methods for appending ticket locks and query ticket locks given a parking meter ID and a time period. We have provided three implementations of the same data access layer, one for each API we have discussed. Above the DAO layer, we have two application components. The meter class represents a parking meter. It creates tickets when cars arrive at the parking lot and computes parking fees when cars leave the parking lot. The reporting class represents a traditional business intelligence reporting module. It creates reports using Tiki Locks. To exercise these two application components, we have created a demo driver program, so you can run it and see the results lively. Following are the general steps to run the sample program. First, you need to build the following Berkeley DB components on your platform. You need to build the core API, the SQL API, the Java API, and the JDBC API. And then you can use the project file we provided to import the sample program into your IDE. After that, you need to configure the project's build path to include the Java and the JDBC jars built from Berkeley DB. Finally, you need to configure the java.library.path VM option to point to the native Berkeley DB libraries in your run configuration. We have created separate tutorials on how to build Berkeley DB components and setting up the sample program in the IntelliJ, Eclipse, or JDeveloper IDEs. Please visit our OPTM website for more details. Let's take a look at some real code. We are going to walk through the sample program and see how we can implement the same application using all three APIs. The basic key value API, the DPL API, and SQL API. We will start this tour with the data model. The sample program uses two kinds of data, ticket and ticket log. Let's start with the ticket class. A ticket object represents a parking ticket created by a parking meter. A ticket contains three fields, a unique ticket ID generated by a sequence, an ID of the parking meter that creates this ticket, and when this ticket is created. It's generally a good engineering practice to make your value class read only. So we have only implemented accessors for this class with a constructor that takes values of all three fields. And you can see that we do not provide mutators for this class. Maybe you have already noticed that we have a couple annotations on this class, namely the entity annotation and the primary key annotation. These annotations are for the DPL implementation. The key value and the SQL implementations just ignore these annotations. Let's briefly explain what these annotations do. For each value class whose objects you want to persist with Berkeley DB, you need to mark it with the entity annotation. For a class annotated with entity, it requires a primary key annotation on some of its fields. Here we have marked the ticket ID as the primary key of the ticket entity class. Optionally, you can specify a sequence used to generate the primary key, and here we use a ticket ID sequence. Another data class is ticket lock. A ticket lock object represents a lock message created from actions generated by parking meters. For example, in this sample application, we lock two kinds of actions. The issue action, when a parking meter creates a ticket, or the charge action, when a parking ticket is paid. A ticket lock object contains five fields. The time when the action happens, the ID of the parking meter performing the action, the ID of the ticket involved in this action, 
the action action performed. And if the action type is charge, the charge the parking fee. Same as the ticket, we have only provided accesses for this class. So this class is read only. Similar to the ticket class, we have used annotations in this class. The ticket lock class is again annotated with entity, it's lock time annotated with primary key, and we have a new annotation, secondary key, annotated on the meter ID. The secondary key annotation is used to create secondary index. So in addition to have a primary key index on lock time, we also have an index on meter ID, which can be used to facilitate our queries based on meter ID. Another remark for the DPL implementation. DPL implementation requires entity classes to have nullary constructors. The constructor can be made private to avoid polluting the public interface. Now we've seen the data types used by the sample program. Let's see how they are persisted in the sample application using all three APIs. To encapsulate the different implementations from the hair level application, we have created a set of the interfaces. The DB Manager interface encapsulates a DB environment handle or a JDBC connection. It has a setup DB method, which can be used to create tables or databases used by the sample program. The main responsibility of a DB manager is to create DAO objects. DAO stands for data access objects, which is a common pattern used to encapsulate persistence logic. The sample program uses two kinds of DAO objects. The ticket DAO used to access ticket objects, and ticket lock DAO used to access ticket lock objects. Another responsibility of DB managers is to manage transactions. It offers methods to start a transaction, to commit the current transaction, and to abort the current transaction. The ticket DL class encapsulates persistent logic for ticket objects. We can use it to save a ticket, to retrieve a ticket, or delete a ticket. The ticket lock DAO encapsulates persistent logic for ticket lock objects. We can save a ticket lock or query ticket locks matching certain criteria. Here we can query lock messages created from a given parking meter during a given period. Since the number of lock messages matching the query is potentially big, we are returning the result as a iterable. So we can iterate through matching lock messages instead of pulling them all at once. The closable iterable is just an interface combining both iterable and auto-closable. Now we have defined all the functionalities we want to implement using interfaces. Let's see how they are implemented using all three APIs. We will start with the SQL implementation. The SQL DB Manager implements the DB Manager interface using the SQL API. It manages a JDBC connection and maintains transactions. The constructor of the SQL DB Manager loads a JDBC driver and opens a new connection for the given database. The SQL interface manages transactions using SQL statements. To avoid passing these statements multiple times, we have created prepared statements for them. To start a transaction, execute SQL statement, begin exclusive. To commit the current transaction, execute commit. Or to about the current transaction, execute rollback. When a DB manager is closed, we just close the connection and all the prepared statements.
The setup DB method creates tables, the ticket ID sequence sequence, and the index. It creates DAO objects by constructing corresponding DAO instances using the connection. The transactions are managed by executing the prepared statements. The SQL Ticket DAO is a SQL implementation of the Ticket DAO. In the constructor, we create all necessary prepared statements. To save a new ticket, we first execute the edit statement to get the next value of the sequence, and then we set parameters for the save statement and execute the insert statement. To retrieve the ticket, we set the parameter for the get statement and execute the query. If a result row is returned, we we'll construct a new ticket object using the returned row. To delete a ticket, we set the parameter for the delete statement and execute. The SQL Ticket Lock DAO is similar. We construct prepared statements in the constructor. And for each method, we first set all the parameters and execute the statement. For the query lock method, we have created a helper class to convert the result set into a iterable. Let's continue with the DPL implementation. Because both Basic DB Manager and DPL DB Manager manages an environment handle, we have created an environment DB Manager as a base class for both DB Managers. The environment DB Manager manages a DB environment handle and manages transactions. To open a new environment handle, we first create an environment config object, setting up various configurations, for example enabling the transaction, and then open a new environment handle using the configuration object. To start a transaction, we call begin transaction on the environment handle and save the return transaction handle in current transaction. To commit or abort the current transaction, we just call commit or abort on the current transaction handle and reset the current transaction handle to null. We also provide a access method to get the current transaction handle. Given the base environment DB Manager, the implementation of DPL DB Manager is simpler. The setup DB method creates two entity stores, one for tickets and one for ticket locks. Recall that the primary key of ticket objects are generated from a sequence, so we also need to create a sequence in the ticket store. Make sure the name used here matches the name given in the primary key annotation. To create an entity store, we create a store config object, setting configuration options on it, and construct a new entity store instance. The DPL Ticket DAO class implements Ticket DAO using the DPL API. In the constructor, it opens the ticket store and the primary key index for the ticket class. Saving a ticket is simple. Just put it to the store using the primary key index. In order to make sure that the primary key is generated by the sequence, we specifically copy the given ticket object and overwrite its ID to null. Getting or deleting a ticket is also simple. Just call get or delete on the primary key index. The DPL ticket lock DAO is similar. In the constructor, we open the lock store, the primary key index, lock time index, and also the secondary index, meter index. To save a lock message, Again, we use put on the primary key index. To query lock messages, we use the secondary index. First, we retrieve a sub-index of the secondary index where the parking meter ID is equal to the given ID. Then we retrieve from the sub-index all messages in the given period. Finally, we convert the cursor object into a closable iterable with the help of a helper class. The basic DB Manager implements DB Manager using the basic key value API. Its setup DB method creates two databases, 
for ticket and ticket logs, creates a sequence for ticket ID, and creates a secondary index for the log message database. To create a database, we create a database config object, setting up configure operations, and call open database on the environment handle. To create a sequence, we create a sequence config object, configure it, and call open sequence on the database handle. To create a secondary index, we create a secondary config object, configure it, and call open secondary database on the environment handle. Basic ticket DAO class implements ticket DAO using the basic key value API. The constructor opens a ticket database, the sequence used to generate primary keys, and bindings for keys and values. The key of a ticket object is its primary key, so we can use a primitive binding for long objects. The value binding is a custom ticket binding implemented below. To save a new ticket, we we'll create two database entries, one for key and one for value. We call get on the sequence to get the next value of the sequence. And then we convert the new sequence value to the key database entry using the key binding. Similarly, we can convert the ticket object to the value database entry using value binding. After that, we can call put on the ticket DB handle to save the ticket. Get and delete are similar. We first convert the ticket ID to the key database entry and call get or delete on the ticket DB handle. Here is the implementation for ticket binding. For object values, we normally extend tuple binding and use methods on tuple input and tuple output to convert between object values and database entries. Basic ticket log DAO is similar. In the constructor, we open the log database, the secondary index database, initialize bindings for keys and values, and also the index keys. To save a log message, we convert the log message to key and value database entries and put them into the log database. The query is a bit more complex. First, we need to open a secondary cursor on the secondary index database. Then we use a helper class to execute the query and turn the result into an iterable. The ticket lock iterable class is where we implement the query based on a secondary cursor. First, we save all query parameters and then convert them into database entries. Then we call get search both range to move the cursor to the first log message matching the query. And then we call set next value to catch the first result. The iterator method creates an iterator for the result set. It calls get next dupe on the cursor to move the cursor to the next result. It caches the next message and checks if it is still in the range of the given period. And if the message is out of the given period, we know we have exhausted the result set and we set the cache next value to now to mark it. Now we are set with all three implementations, we can implement higher level components for the application. The sample application has two components. The meter class representing parking meters and the reporting class performing analysis. Let's start with the meter class. The meter class has a parking meter ID and uses a DB manager and two DAO objects to manage tickets. A parking meter has two functions. The park method is called when a car arrives and issues a parking ticket for the car. The depart method is called when a car leaves and calculates a parking fee using the car's parking ticket. The park method performs two actions in the transaction. It creates a new ticket and a new message lock for issuing the ticket. The depart method performs three actions in the transaction. First, it retrieves the ticket and computes the parking fee. Then it adds a new charge lock message to the database and finally deletes the ticket. 
the parking fees computed by a helper function. The reporting class shows how to perform analysis using the database. The analysis is purely performed using log messages, so we only need a database manager and a ticket log DAO. The reporting class shows how to perform two analyses. The first one computes the total number of cars arriving at a given parking meter during a given period. It queries all the log messages matching the criteria and iterates through them, counting all issue messages. The second analysis computes the total parking fees collected during a given period on a given parking meter. It also iterates over all matching log messages and accumulating parking fees in the charge messages. To demonstrate how to use the two application components in a real application, we also created a driver program, Parking Demo. To make it easy to switch over different implementations, we also created a helper class, DB Manager Factory, to create DB Managers. The driver program first creates a DB Manager to set up the database, and then it starts a simulation to generate tickets and ticket lock messages. It creates a new DB Manager and iterates through simulation events provided by the Demo Data Helper class. After the simulation finishes, it creates another DB Manager to perform the two analyses provided by the reporting class. This completes the sample program. We hope it's enough to get you started with your own application using Berkeley DB. For more information on Berkeley DB Java APIs, please visit our OTM website. Thank you for your time.